The brains of individuals with different attachment styles also differ from each other, that different areas of the brain are affected by the way that your caregivers interacted with you when you were growing up and created your attachment style. I'm Dr. Sarah Hensley. I'm a specialized social psychologist who's been studying the science of attachment and attraction inside romantic relationships for over 15 years. Let's start with the dismissive avoidant because I know y'all want to know about their brains. Okay, they have reduced connectivity in areas of the brain responsible for emotional processing. And functional MRI studies have shown that when exposed to emotional stimuli, dismissive avoidance tend to shut down in their nervous system and try to disconnect from their emotions, meaning that they engage in emotional suppression. And we can actually see that on the functional MRI. Okay, they also tend to have reticular activating systems that are sort of pre-programmed towards self. So I always talk about the blinders effect of the dismissive avoidant where they grew up being pushed into hyper-independence, sometimes parentified before they were developmentally ready for that. And that created the blinders where they are very, very concerned with their path, their needs, what's going on with them. And they actually miss a lot of social cues, especially around intimacy and their romantic relationship. This is because the way the brain developed having to meet your own needs when an adult should have been jumping in there meeting their needs they had to be sort of hyper aware of their own experiences the anxious preoccupied person has the brain of a drug addict what okay to some degree so the neuroscience suggests that the dopaminergic system of the brain which is the brain's reward center it's dopamine's the hit of pleasure that we get after we get something that we want or we've accomplished a task or a need has been met okay it makes us feel good it's very much the feel good chemical of the brain that rewards us when we get a need met well because Anxious preoccupied individuals in childhood got a lot of intermittent reinforcement of love, affection, and emotional attunement. They actually wore out sort of the dopaminergic system in the brain. So they got the need met, it was taken away. They got the need met, it was taken away. Everything that's addicting has that intermittent reinforcement, like drugs, the high and then the low. Gambling, you bet and you win, and then that's taken away when you lose. And so everything that is addicting involves intermittent reinforcement, and it involves the hijacking of that dopamine reward system, where you've called upon it again and again and again, and the body and brain are always trying to reach homeostasis. And so what happens to the anxious preoccupied is their dopamine ner- or receptors for those dopamine um, chemicals become desensitized over time. So they actually lose sensitivity of their receptors, meaning they can have all the dopamine, but their brain can't use it appropriately. And that's always why they're constantly chasing and seeking that connection because they're looking for their next hit of dopamine. So we call the anxious preoccupied the love addict for a reason. Let's talk about the fearful avoidant been following me for any length of time you know they've had childhood trauma and that's what creates the betrayal wound is the loss of trust between the child and one or more of their caregivers and when that happens when we have childhood trauma even if it's little t trauma or enough repeated little t traumas we start to see the changes in the brain associated with complex PTSD and that's often highly correlated with fearful avoidant attachment so we see two major structures affected in trauma on the developing brain one is the hippocampus the hippocampus is responsible for our memories and it has to do especially with working memory and so people with cptsd or just fearful avoidant attachment can often experience a lot of brain fog a lot of memory issues a lot of confusion that's totally normal and then the amygdala which is the threat detection center of the brain has a lot to do with fear and anger responses is enlarged so fearful avoidance are extremely hyper vigilant people they are always Always sort of on the lookout subconsciously for being hurt or betrayed in their relationship and so they can overthink they can pick somebody apart they put their partners under a microscope and they're very very hyper vigilant inside of their relationships they're more likely to become emotionally reactive because of that enlarged amygdala and generally we also see potentially a little bit of shrinkage in the prefrontal cortex so that is all from the up-to-date science if you are interested in attachment please please like and follow also check out my podcast the love doc podcast we are on all platforms you may have to search the love doc podcast dr sarah hensley because we are so new um and also view my website, thedatingdecoder.com.